Well, as I said, next, next Sunday we're going to start the I Am Second series, but uh, I wanted to take this morning to talk about something that I believe is, is pretty important uh, to us as a church, and, and certainly what God has put in front of us over the next uh, coming weeks and, and, and months. And, and um, I want to start out with a, a devotional. It, was, it, it appeared in our, a thing called Our Daily Bread a while back, uh, several years ago. And uh, it, it puts the principle of James 2, 15, 16 in perspective. And James 2, 15, 16 says, if, if a brother or sister doesn't have clothes or food or whatever, and, and all you say is, hey, take, you know, go in peace, keep warm, have a nice day, hope you find some food, and you don't do anything about it, what good is your faith? What good is your faith? If that's all that we can do is, is wish somebody well when, when they have issues and problems, um, and then, then we got we got problems. So here's the devotion. I'm going to read it to you. It says, I ate breakfast the other day with a man who 60 years ago sold newspapers and shined shoes on the streets of downtown Boise, Idaho. He told me about his life in those days and how much things have changed. What's changed the most, I asked him. People, he said. They don't seem to care anymore. As a case in point, he told me about his mother, who often fed hungry men that came to her house. Every day she prepared food for her family and then made several more meals because she knew that homeless travelers would start to show up around mealtime. Obviously these are people that she, she wouldn't know. But she had compassion for them, for those who were in need. Once she asked the man how he happened to find his way to her door. The man replied, your address is written on the boxcar wall. It would be wonderful if our homes were known as places where hungry people could find bread. But more than that, we need to pray that our homes will be known as places where spiritually hungry men, women, and children will be loved, listened to, and given the bread of life. Thousands of weary ones need consolation. Souls of the hungry are crying for bread. Many have never yet heard of salvation. Many are waiting by you to be fed. What a statement about this woman. Written on the boxcar wall. People that you don't even know. I'm putting myself out there for, for guys that just ride trains and don't have homes and I, I don't know anything about them. But they need something. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that something for them. What a statement. And while it's, it's really, really incumbent upon us as, as, as people of God and, and as a church to, to meet physical needs of hungry people and to serve, which we've done a lot of that, there's a greater need needs to be fed. There's a greater need, and over and above the need for food, but we, we just can't stop at, short, at meeting the spiritual needs. We can't stop short there. And the flip side of, 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 of meeting physical needs, or, or serving as we, as we did the Good Friday dinner, or Love Medina, is, is hospitality. Hospitality. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. The two sides of the coin are related. Hospitality takes acts uh, beyond just service and meeting physical needs. Not, not that, that I, I'm not diminishing that, but, but um, hospitality means something a little bit different. So I'm going to read this, this real brief, short passage from Hebrews chapter 13. It's just two verses. Um, and and it, it's an interesting, um, just, just an interesting statement on hospitality, but so we're going we're to need to go back and, and, and read, or, or, I mean, look at the history of hospitality to really understand where this is coming from. So we're just going to look at, at those two verses, Hebrews 13, verses 1 and 2. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for, for, for by doing so, doing so, some people have been entertaining angels without knowing it. That's exactly what this woman lived out, entertaining angels without even knowing it. And, 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 Strangers, people that she'd never met in, in her life. I, I've got a little definition of hospitality, and it's, it's in the bullets, isn't it? It says, the quality or disposition of receiving and treating guests and strangers in a warm, friendly, generous way. But how do you guys define hospitality? What is hospitality to you? And, and I'm, let's, let's throw this open for a couple minutes. What, what, what is your definition of hospitality? It may vary amongst us. Obviously, this woman had, had a definition of it. What, what would you, how would you define hospitality? When do you feel like you're being hospitable to people? 
Any thoughts? Yeah, Anne, go ahead. Uh, when you have like unexpected guests come to your house and you only had to cook so much food for your family and you have to eat less food so that everybody has some. Okay. That was a shock, by the way. <laughs> I take it they were your relatives. Chris? Welcoming people to your home or anywhere, you know, things that you don't know and, and treating them as if they're friends. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a good definition. Nancy, you have to Pretty much like what she said. I mean, just opening up your home and whatever is yours is, is theirs. They just offer whatever they have to whoever, you know, visits. Okay. Any others? Those are good. Yeah. I think it goes even outside the home too. It's you know, people that, that you meet, people at work, and people that you come across, that you come across for a reason. Okay. Yeah, so that's just an accident. Can we write it to people? Yeah, Jimmy? Uh, when I'm with the guys we work with, we try to just talk to people about who they are and just have open conversation. Okay. Being hospitable. All of those are, are part of the, uh, what it means to be hospitable, to have hospitality. But I, I, I want to I wanna just. Take those and, and, and just hold on to those, those thoughts that you heard. I want to look a little bit at, at what hospitality was in biblical times. Because it was a little bit different uh, back then. And, and obviously, you know, we didn't always have holiday inns and, and 50 motel chains that, that, that people could stay at. But back in biblical times, there were a lot of itinerant people. They just moved from place to place. They, they, they just moved about. And, and they were, lots of times they were poor. They didn't have the money to uh, afford anything. And Jesus... Paul depended on people as they went from town to town to town, ministering to people. And they often totally depended on, on, on people uh, to, to host them and take care of them. And when, when Jesus sent out the apostles to, to do ministry, he told them, hey, don't take anything for the journey. He was presupposing that people would be hospitable and it opened their homes uh, to them. So uh, hospitality was, was an incredibly high value back then, even higher than, than, than we value it now. And they had a very different perspective on it. And I want to take a few minutes and, and, and just talk about some of the differences. Because uh, that, that's, that's the writer of Hebrews is, is coming from that. And that's, that's the background that he, he's coming out of that. So we need to go back and just, just look a little bit at what hospitality was back in the day. First of all, hospitality was not an option. It was not an option. In Leviticus 19, 33 and 34 says, When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. Oh, and by the way, I am the Lord your God. That's who's telling you this. I'm, I'm giving you this straight out, folks. You, you need to treat people and love them as you love yourself. That's kind of what he says. It's pretty strong language. And, and, and treat them as, as native born, as if they were one of one of you. And he says, don't, don't forget, you guys were foreigners in Egypt. You should remember how hard it was to be in a foreign land. And you should treat people in a very unique and, and special way. And this, it, the verse this morning reiterates that hospitality is not just for friends. It says, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. In fact, hospitality back in, in biblical times focused on foreigners or people that you didn't know, aliens, uh, people in need, much like the lady in, in the devotion from, from the boxcar walls. And, and often that group is the people with the greatest needs. Widows, orphans, poor, travelers with no... Nowhere to rest for the night, nowhere to go. There's just no Motel 6 isn't going to be leaving the light on for. It's just not going to happen. And so they, they, they you know, the, in the ancient world, hospitality meant taking these folks in and providing directly for that person's need. I want to read a, a, a quick story. And if you want to follow along, this is on Genesis 18. And it's on page 15. We read from Genesis 18 on page 15. Just a few short verses. It's a perfect example of, of this. 
in, in Abraham's time, hospitality was extended to anybody who needed it, strangers, acquaintances, and, and it, it would bring people that didn't know each other together as, as friends. So let me just read these. This is, this is called The Three Visitors. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them, and he bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed, then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried in the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seahs of fine flour and knead it and make some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf, gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. And then he brought some curds and milk of the calf that had been prepared and set them before him. And while they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Put that in the context of today's life. You're sitting out on your front porch. And, and I, as some of you, you know, neighborhoods might not lend itself to this, but, but let's say there's, there's, there's a lot of foot traffic in your area. And there's three guys walking past your house. And you can tell they don't have a lot. And you're going to run out there and say, hey, come on in. I want to feed you. I want to take care of you. And I know we live in a different world. But the spirit of that is still the same. We're, we're <coughs> we open our hearts to people like that. And that, that you know, Abraham did that here. Abraham did that. He just ran out and, 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 and opened his heart and, and, and his home to, to these folks. And um, they eventually delivered the message to him that, that he and Sarah were going to have a baby. But he would, have, he would have missed it. He would have missed that altogether if he had not had that hospitable heart, that spirit of, of hospitality. And, and it was such a powerful value in their culture it was crazy how people were committed to this. This is just some of the things that, when you said hospitality, you said the kind of things that might come to your mind, the kind of things that people did back then. I mean, they were absolutely over the top. But you would make the guest the lord of your home. And you would become their servant. Whatever they needed, whatever they wanted, everything was put at the guest's disposal. Sometimes, you would even offer your wife and children to your guests. And the next story in Genesis 19, Lot did exactly that. But hospitality was, was just this value that superseded everything. It was just way over and, and above everything. Um, how about this one? You would never leave your guests alone to the point of even sleeping alongside of them. That's crazy. But again, that spirit of hospitality had, had such an incredible uh, uh, value. Um, you would defend a guest from an enemy at any cost to yourself. Crazy how much they sold out to this and how much it meant to them. Sharing a meal was like sharing life. Literally like sharing life. It was a, it was a deep gesture of intimacy. I'm sure everybody in this room has, has had people, friends over for dinner, but do we ever, I mean, are we thinking in terms of, wow, let's I'm going to have a deep gesture of intimacy and make this meal for them? I mean, we just don't normally think in, in those terms, but that's, that's how they did. They were just over the top committed to this value of hospitality. And so the, the writer of Hebrews that we read this morning uh, tells us that, that uh, don't forget to be hospitable to strangers. Verse 2, but it says, 2b says, by, by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. If you remember the parable of the sheep and the goats, and, and, and Jesus um, was, was talking to the sheep and the, and the goats on the other side, and he says, hey, whatever you, you gave me, uh, uh, or gave somebody, uh, the least of these, a, a drink of cold water, you, you did it for me. Or when you visited me, or, or when you visited them in prison, you were visiting me. Verse 25, 35 says, For I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Jesus says, when you do those kinds of things, that's the same thing as inviting me in. That's what he's, he's saying here. That it's not, we're not just inviting this poor person in that needs help. We're inviting Christ in. 
And, and when they asked him, when did we do that? Jesus responded, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. We have no idea what might be transpiring. Things that we are totally unaware of when, when we are willing to have that hospitable heart. And, and the point is, is, is you know, if, if we just invite our best friends and people that we know over for lunch, it doesn't fulfill this command. It doesn't. Because it says strangers. So the hospitality in biblical times wasn't just something people did. It was a way of life. It was a deeply held, entrenched value in, in their life. Romans 12, uh, verses 12 and 13 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Again, this is New Testament now. We've moved into the New Testament. This is just, you know, way back in, in when, when people were, uh, you know, 500 years before Jesus. This is New Testament stuff now. And in the New Testament, the Greek word translated hospitality literally means love of strangers. Love of strangers is, is what it means. 1 Peter 4 9 says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Attitude check. Without grumbling. Sometimes we have the thought that hospitality is making our guests feel at home, even though we wish they were. <laughs> this is saying, be hospitable without grumbling. Don't. It, it, so, and, and I get that our culture has, has changed, and I, I don't think we're ever going to be value hospitality to the point that they did, and I would never encourage you to turn your wife and daughters over to visitors. But the fact I mean, God commands us to be hospitable. He commands us to be hospitable. And, and what does that mean for us if we are to keep that commandment? He doesn't say, hey, it would be kind of cool if you were. I'd like you to do this. That'd be really neat if you help these folks out. He says, do it. He says, do it. So what does that mean for, for us as, as a church and as, as we're going forward? And, and um, you know, we, we have this total thing coming up and, and uh, block parties we're talking about and, 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 and uh, doing some uh, cookouts and things and inviting people uh, to, to our home. But I, I, it, it, it's dawned on me as I've had some conversations with people and, and, and as we've been trying to, to get this thing moving a little bit, how many of us are strangers to each other? If we were to be honest, how many of us are strangers to each other? Where we, we, we talk to each other here, or maybe in a life group, or on Sunday morning, we have a couple cupcakes together and say, hey, see you next week. But, but what do we really know about each other? Are, are we, have, have, we, have we ever gotten into somebody's life, gotten involved in their life, and, and come alongside of them? And, and, and I know that happens sometimes, but I, 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 know for, I also know for a fact there are people that have been here three, four years that don't know half the people here. We're not a big group. We're, we're strangers to each other in a lot of ways. And, and, and so, so we, that might be a place to start. Maybe before we start with strangers outside of the church, we, we start with strangers here and get to know each other and get involved in, in each other's, uh, other's life. And, and that really starts with acquiring God's heart that we read here. Offer hospitality. Be hospitable. To strangers, to people that you know, to, to, to friends. And we, we can't just sprinkle magic dust and become hospitable like that. We can't do that on our own. It's, a, it's out of our comfort zone. And, 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 and to be honest with you, I, I, I think a lot of times when, when we start thinking, oh, I don't know about that, that's not what I do, or, or I don't have the money, or I don't have this, or I don't have that, or I can't do this, or I'm too busy, or whatever. All these things. And, and, and God says, and we, we won't even tell God, you know, you, you just don't understand, God. I got this, I got that. I didn't read any conditions in here where it says be hospitable unless you can't or you don't have enough room or you don't have this. It just said be hospitable. I, I, I didn't see anything else in there with all those conditions and stuff. I, it just says be, be hospitable. And, and so we have, we have some amazing opportunities coming up to, to be hospitable. But hospitality is an investment. It involves sharing life experiences. 
we know some of our neighbors on a superficial, hey, how you doing? Cute dog. You know, th those kinds of, that, that level of, of friendship. But we've never shared life experiences with them. We, we, don't, we don't really know much of what's going on in our life. We've never shared struggles with them. I, I think people grow closer together and, be, and become friends and, and not strangers when they share those kinds of, of things. But God commands us to love one another. To, to love others as we love ourselves. Hospitality is, 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 is one of the ways that we show that. And, and I, I got to thinking, we, one of our greatest resources is our homes. We have a great resource in, in our homes. And, and in, back in the day, um, when, when we told you, you invited someone to your home, you were, you, you were really telling them how much you cared about them and how much you wanted to teach them about God's love and concern for their soul. It made a statement to that, that, that I, I want to get to know you. I, I want to I get to know you on a deeper level. And, and, and yeah, we, can, we, you know, we go out to lunch, and, and I've gone to lunch with a lot of different people and, and gone to restaurants and stuff. It's just not the same. It loses the intimacy. Yeah, Randy? You know, uh, one of the things, I, I know personally, you know, how, and you don't mind giving my house my yard or whatever, and how often over the many years going back, how I've offered the people in the neighborhood to come or bring their children or whatever, and it's amazing how many won't do it. And, you know, I don't know what they're thinking. They're just saying it to, to be nice, and that's it. And the, you know, all the years, there's been very few who did it. And the church I used to attend before I came here, you know, for at least a good eight years, I offered to the church there to, to bring in, to come, you know, bring the youth group and be there, and they could do like, the Bible studies and, and the camp, and whatever, or do they with the children and then swim or whatever. whatever. And, and, and you know what? They never ever come to come on. And I, I well, asked them for years, so it's not even the person that might be offering; it's the people that out, out there that doesn't feel comfortable or think that they're just trying to say something nice and don't really mean it. We've, we've, we've moved from where they were in, in biblical times and slipping alongside and protecting with your life and offering your family to, to the far other side of the spectrum. To, to not wanting to do it at all. Because, because of trust, because of, because of schedules, because of you know, the list, whatever. So, so we've, 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 we've moved. You know, the pendulum has swung way too far the other way. Way too far the other way, and you know, I, in, in the early church, in the beginning of the church, it, it was the home, not the church. It was the home that served as centers for evangelism, for sharing Christ <coughs> with people. Think about that. We it, it, that's flip flopped. We we can't you know do it at church, but it was the homes that 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 that, that was the main source of introducing Christ, sharing Christ with with other people. Um, there's a quote from a guy named Michael Green. He says, one of the most important methods of spreading the gospel in antiquity was the use of homes. And he made, uh, Aquila and Priscilla are two examples in, in the Bible. He says, homes like this have become exceedingly effective in the evangelistic outreach of the church. When we open our homes, we're offering ourselves. We're offering ourselves. We're opening a, a, a door that historically has been a very powerful force sharing the love of Christ. We're telling our guests that they are important to us. I was talking to a pastor earlier this week. He said one of the things they used to do is, is they had a, 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 a supper for six at their church. And you just have, if you're a married couple, you'd have two other couples over. If you were single, you'd have five people over. But supper's for six. And, and that doesn't have to be six. You can vary it, obviously. But, but it was just something that they did in their church. It was a culture that they developed. They said, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to sell out to this. This, this. this command is not any less valid than any other command in Scripture. This isn't just a throw-in. Oh, yeah, by the way, be hospitable. It's not, it's not a throw-in. It's just as powerful and as valid as anything else in Scripture. And, and, and uh, so, so they developed the culture. They said, okay, we're going to take God's word seriously, and, and, and we're going to do that. And... and um, you know, there's a, a game night, a card night. We, you know, we've talked uh, in this church. Our, our two main means of, of, of sustaining and growing and reaching people were service, which we do great, and the other was, was basically hospitality. 
building friendships, selling out to that idea, developing that culture. And we're great over here on the service end of it, but we're, 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 we're way behind the curve over here on the hospitality, developing friendships curve. And, and you know, I, I, maybe we dedicate, uh, whether it's supper for six or we dedicate a Friday or Saturday evening, every few, four, five, six weeks, whatever, we're playing cards or game night. The point is there are a lot of ways to skin the cat if we buy into God's principles, if we have God's heart. And, and you know, with, with all the things, with summer coming up and cookouts and <coughs> planning block parties and with Sototo, hopefully we're going to meet a lot of new people at, at Sototo. What are we willing to do with that? What are we willing to do with that? And, and, and um, you know, as I said, we've moved so far in the opposite direction uh, where, where, we, where we say, hey, God, I'm sorry, I, just, I don't do hospitality. That's not, not my deal. Uh, have, you know, this guy over here do that. And, and so I, I think we need to be challenged. That's, that's as I said, we, we, we had a two-point plan. And we're good in one of them and not so good in the other. But it's not just about growing the church. It's about, as it said here, sharing the love of Christ. That's what it has to be about. That's what, it, and, and then whatever happens after that is a byproduct or, or, or gravy or anything on the cake or whatever. Um, but that's really what it was designed for back in, in the Old Testament. And that's where God says, hey, I, tomorrow, I need you to go. So I, 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 where does that leave us? I, I, I think we need to take this seriously. I think we need to look at, are we going to do suppers for six? Are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? Are we going to, are we going to say, hey, Lord, how do we, we want your heart. We, we believe what you're saying. We take your command seriously. What do you need to do? You need to show us. We're not so good at this. We need some help. But we can give you our willingness to do that. That doesn't take any skill. It doesn't cost. It, it, it's just, it's okay, Lord. We're, we're going to do this. So, um, I, I think we I think we need to be in prayer over that, and, and we need to think as like I said as, as as we have these opportunities over the next coming weeks and months. How can I be part of your your mandate, Lord, to offer hospitality to strangers, <coughs> and, and and do what you would have me to do, and then maybe somewhere along the way, maybe I can even share the love of Christ with someone. If I'm willing to be obedient to that, Lord, may, maybe you would allow me the privilege of of, of doing that. So let's pray. Lord, I, I, I thank you so much for this challenge. I, I know that it's not a, necessarily a comfort zone, not just for us, but for, uh, as, as people said, Randy, or as Randy said, people receiving the invitation. We live in a culture that it just gets funny about this kind of stuff. But, but Lord, if we step by faith and, and say, okay, God, we're going to do what you've given us to do. We're going to trust you for the results. That's all we can, all we can do. But we have to be willing to take that step in obedience. So, Lord, I pray that we would be willing to be obedient. I pr uh, obedient. I pray that we would acquire your heart for doing this. I pray that you would help us with that. I pray that you would give us ideas, opportunities. Uh, help us to work through whatever issues we might have, Lord. And uh, we just offer this up to you and ask for your blessing on it. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> We move into a, a, a time of hospitality with the Lord, where He offers us hospitality of, of His His broken body and, and blood. And uh, you know, the Scripture says we, we're not we weren't just strangers to to God before we came to Christ. We were we were His enemies. We were aliens. And, and yet He still offered. He kept. He said, "Come on, I want you to come and have this. I want you to partake of this. I want you." to I invite you to, to come and be part of what I have for you. And, and nothing symbolizes that more uh, than communion. So we're going we're to celebrate that together, but also um, with, with the thought that, Lord, this is your hospitality to us. Show us how we can be hospitable in the manner that you would have us to be hospitable to others. And uh, see what he does with that. We're going to celebrate that and invite any, anyone who um, has accepted Christ as the Lord and your Savior to, uh, to celebrate with us. And uh, before we do that, let's, let's, 
Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Phil, do you